on today's show. It showed in, in, in my marriage and in, how, in my work, how I was treating fellow employees. I just was so angry. Eventually, he and his wife divorced. Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. I'm Brian Warren. And I'm Laurel and Tyler Thompson. Thanks for spending this time with us. Mm -hmm. You know, forgiving others and sometimes ourselves is one of the toughest things we'll mm. ever have to do. And it's never a one-time thing. Time mm -hmm. and time again, we're faced with the choice of forgiveness throughout our lives. Well, you know, forgiveness is such a difficult thing because uh, the Bible says something very powerful. Jesus said it's a impossible that offense would not come. Mm. And so what he's saying so is, and he, and, and he also goes on in another verse in the scripture, and he says that uh, keep yourself from offense. Mm. And, um, you know, this is something that our hearts are sort of like Velcro. They can be hurt by a number of things, sure. you know, emotionally, uh, yeah. discouraged by what people say to us. And one of the things that I find mm. as a pastor, I hear a lot of church hurt. Mm -hmm. where people have been hurt uh, by what someone said, sure. well-meaning in the church, yeah. and they, as a result of that, mm -hmm. because they're hurt, they hurt other people. Right. Hurt people hurt people. Right. And that's why it's so important to forgive. Mm -hmm. Even before we go into the new year, you've got to mm -hmm. drop some baggage, and you've oh. got to begin to go into this new year with God's purpose and His destiny mm -hmm. fully alive in you. It's so important. And yeah. I saw God come through in a really big way. I had heard mm -hmm. that someone had said something kind of nasty, uh, about me to yeah. someone else. Well, that someone else was loyal to me, yeah. told me what they said. I don't know how wise that was, but I knew what they said. Yes. And it ended up that we were going to be on the same stage at a large women's event. Mm -hmm. And I just, my temptation was to go to all the other women that I knew were my friends and yeah. kind of say, do you know what she said about mm. me and blah, blah, blah. And, and God said, don't say a word completely forgive her. Yes. Don't say a word. Wow. And um, during the course of that weekend event, I had to be on stage several times uh, with her, and God just showed up and gave me such love, such compassion, mm -hmm. as I was obedient to him, and yes. I didn't take the offense and beside, you know, decide that I would be the judge. Yes. I let God do it, and in the end, it was just complete vindication, and to this day, I hold no ought about it, and... Um, I've let it go, and you know? And that's the beautiful thing about your personality, because I do know that, that you do not hold those things. Yes. You know, I, uh, most of my life playing professional football and everything, it seems like everyone cheered me and everything. Yeah. When I got into ministry and, and pastoring especially, mm. man, I've been called more than more than a child of God by <laughs> you know, more people that I right. know. Right. Sometimes and, we get and called And I've had to, I've had to <laughs> learn. And yeah. uh, it, it may not be uh, as far as uh, biblical, but I heard Serena. William, William say something mm, when they wow. were talking about all the haters and, and they mm -hmm. said what do you think about and what do you do with all those people who do not approve of you she said who has time to think of that <laughs> all right <laughs> if you're a champion you've got to stay right. focused and we've right. got a calling and we've got to <laughs> be a champion that's trust right trust god powerful food for thought mm -hmm. well you know what in our first story sylvia craved affection which led her down a hard road of addiction Watch what it took to transform her life. Take a look. My dad did say, you'll never amount to a hill of beans. And that sentence just right there crushed my spirit. Sylvia Marshall heard few kind words from her father. And while he was an alcoholic and verbally abusive, her mother was emotionally detached. It left Sylvia feeling empty and alone. I got absolutely no emotional support from my parents. I just felt that my dad hated me and disapproved of everything I did, and it was devastating. As Sylvia got older, she looked to boys for affirmation. I saw my life just reaching out to whoever that, that paid attention to me and that loved me. Hoping to start a normal life, she married a man she knew from high school, but there were problems from the very beginning. He was an alcoholic. And as a pattern, living with an alcoholic, being raised by one, I, it was the norm for me to marry one. 
He wasn't abusive, but had little to do with Sylvia or their growing family. He wasn't there, and I didn't know what I was doing. I just felt very, very alone and very afraid. After their second son was born, he distanced himself even more, and they separated. At 28, Sylvia moved in with her parents, and the couple shared custody of the boys. But as her parents watched her sons, Sylvia started going to bars, where she was introduced to cocaine. I fell in love with it, and I was able to self-medicate and numb the pain that I'd felt for so many years and from the, from the failure of my marriage. Sylvia's new lifestyle quickly took a hold of her, and she partied constantly. As a result, her ex-husband took full custody of their sons. I emotionally was a wreck. I was just in a very, very dark place. And unfortunately, my children were the ones that had to suffer. Sylvia started bartending and eventually got hooked on crack. As the addiction got worse, she turned to the streets, doing whatever she needed to do to stay high. I prostituted. I sold my body. I uh, stole from my family. I was very scandalous, and I found myself being arrested on three or four different occasions. Later, both her parents passed away. But before her father died, he told her something she had wanted to hear her entire life. Right before he died, he did tell me that he loved me. The only time he ever told me. I promised him time after time that I would stop. He goes, I don't want to live if you're not going to live. And I, okay, I'll try, I'll try. But as much as she tried, she couldn't keep that promise. Things got even worse when she received a final gift from her parents. I inherited a lot of money, about $130,000. And I even had money put in a CD for my kids. I was gonna do it the right way. I was gonna get clean and sober and that never happened. I ended up spending the whole amount in eight months, it was gone. As the years passed and the addiction ravaged her body, Sylvia had lost all hope and considered suicide. In her desperation, she reached out to Kevin, her son who had become a Christian. I figured I'm gonna take my life or I'm gonna put this quarter in the payphone and pray that my son, Kevin, answers the phone. And he did. And I told him, I said, I've, I've lost everything, Kevin. I've spent it all. And I just wanna die. Or will you help me? I need help. He said, I'm gonna find a home for you. You need to go into rehab. And I said, I'll do anything. He took her to the Walter Hoving home in Pasadena, a Bible-based recovery home for women. There, they met John and Elsie Benton, founders of the ministry. The person had no hope, you know, and um, just didn't, I don't think she felt that she could change. As we call her mom, B was there, she prayed with me and I, sobbed uncontrollably and I accepted the Lord as Jesus is my savior. Right then without even having read the Bible, I hadn't read the Bible, I didn't care. I knew that there was only one way that I was gonna get help and that was to look up to Jesus. Sylvia says she never suffered withdrawals and though it wasn't always easy, she finished the program and learned who she was in God. As I grew in the Walter Hoving home and learned who Christ was in me, and just everything in scripture, I began to thirst for more of it. Mom and Dad Benton showed her a love she never thought was possible. I was starving for affection. I was starving for love. I had been denied that all my life, and the Bentons loved me unconditionally. When they come to know Jesus Christ as their savior, and that relationship helps them to overcome their past. And it's amazing what God does with these ladies. Sylvia also learned to love herself. We'd all been through something where we, we felt that we were not worthy of forgiveness. But with Jesus, he forgave me for all of it. And so through time, I was able to forgive myself. Today, Sylvia is the vice president and director of the Walter Hoving Home in Las Vegas. I look in the mirror sometimes and, and just am in awe 
of what God has done, what Jesus has done in my life and how he's completely renewed my mind. He's transformed my life. It's amazing how those words in our life that uh, come from those formative years when we're being, we're forming who we are, our attitudes and opinions on what we think, and uh, you're not going to amount to a hill of beans. I find that uh, many of the things that we're still battling with today are things that people said or something that we saw at a different, at another season of our life. You know, that is a place that we can deal with today. You can't help what happens to you, but you can choose what you do with what happens to you. And I believe that forgiveness is one of the most powerful gifts that God has handed out. For number one, the forgiveness that he has forgiven us of our sins allows us eternal life. So that is a gift that keeps on giving. But it also allows us to begin to move into the destiny and the purpose that he has for us. You know that familiar verse in that prophet Jeremiah, he says in the 29th chapter and 11th verse, I know the plans that I have for you. Now listen to this, no matter what you've been told before, plans of good, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. To get into that future and the hope, he goes on with that verse and he said, I'll bring you back from all the places you were carried away captive to this place. And I believe in order to do that, he needs to untie you, untether you from your past. That's forgiveness. Call the number on the screen if you say, man, you know what, you're reading my mail, Pastor. I want to pray with you, but I, this cost you absolutely nothing. You've got to get into that future and the hope that God has for you. So if it was a father, if it was a, a family member, let's let it go right now. Come on, ball those hands up. Ball your fist up. Come on. You've been fighting everybody. Now let's pray. Father, I forgive even as I would have you forgive me. Come on, pray with me. And now I release them. Come on, open up those hands. They owe me nothing. And I ask you to make me the person you want me to be in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, call the number on the screen because it starts the process. He knows the plans that he has for you, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Well, coming up after the break, Dr. Harrison Mungle stops by to help us stop, drop, and listen. Don't go away. I married the wrong man. Am I stuck forever in this hopeless nightmare? What am I gonna do? Thanks for your hard work. I've gotta stop drinking. But how do I stop? How can I break this addiction? So I cheated and we won. There are a lot of sins worse than that, right? I mean, it's not like I killed somebody. Our minds are filled with hard questions, situations and challenges that come at us every day. Where do we go for answers? And who can we ask? In Pat Robertson's latest teaching, Ask Anything, you'll get biblical answers to life's toughest questions. Get Ask Anything and get the answers you need today. I am Dr. Harrison Mungo, and today I want to talk to you about Mungalo marriage uh, and the concept of communication. And I want you to think of three words that by the end of my little talk with you today, you're going to remember. I want to think of stop, drop, and listen. In case you're wondering who I am, I am a psychotherapist. I'm a psychoanalysis. I actually work in uh, psychiatry. I have a whole background in mental health. And I've been married for 27 years, and we have seven kids. And I'm sure you're saying, yeah, right. Well, we do have seven kids and 27 years, and I love marriage. I believe in marriage. And I'll tell you something, marriage is, it, when, when God instituted marriage, God really had a great plan in mind. And I know that there is no perfect marriage out there. I know there are a lot of unhappy marriage out there. But God's plan is that we have healthy marriages. And in order to have healthy marriages, Kathleen and I have, Kathleen and I have found three things that we have kept in mind very closely at heart that we have seen the progress of it. Stop, drop, and you got it. Stop, drop, and listen. So 
what, 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 when I say stop, what does that mean? Well, a lot of times in our relationship, we get so busy that we even forget who is around us, whether it's our spouse or even our children. We get so caught up in everything else around us that we don't listen anymore. It's almost like if you have kids and they're making noise and you don't listen to them anymore. You don't hear the, 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 the screaming anymore because you get so prone to the noise. Well, in relationship, we need to be very conscious of the fact that we need to stop what we're doing and we need to listen to our spouse or even our children. But particularly today, I want to talk to you about your spouse. You need to stop what you're doing and listen. Listen within the message of the message. Because if you don't listen, five, five um, uh, years later down the line or three months later down the line, you know what's going to happen? You're going to realize that something has gone wrong. You're going to see uh, a wall is being built up. The relationship is getting very cold. And you wondered, where did it all start it? Well, you know, I've learned from, our, from uh, counseling a lot of couples that no couples have the intention of breaking up in relationship. They have no intentions of seeing their, their, their marriage fall apart. But when they do see the issues, it's too late. And when they want to backtrack, they realize if they had done certain things in the past, it would have been eliminated. So the first thing is stop what you're doing. Stop and listen within the message of the message of your spouse and see what's going on. The second thing is I want you to learn to drop everything you're doing around you. So when you stop, you drop. One of the concepts I've learned is when I come home on a weekend or even after work, I put my phone away. We get so caught up with the cell phone. As soon as someone texts us, we have to text them or, or someone sent a message, we have to reply right away. And why should we be utilizing our family time for friends and other people that can wait on, a, on another day. So when you think of dropping everything, I want you to think about dropping uh, the concept of uh, communicating with other people and put your focus on your spouse. Drop whatever it may be around you and focus on your spouse. And then the third thing, which I think is very, very important, is listen. You need to listen to your spouse. Listen. Uh, look at the, the verbal and the nonverbal communication that has been presented and you need to listen what they're saying to you. You know, we probably have heard or you probably have heard listening right now about the love languages, etc. But one of the love languages I find a lot of females uh, are very important to them is communication. So Kathleen and I, what we have done is regardless of whatever time we go to bed at night, we have learned that we need to communicate about the day. So I want to leave a, a couple quick tips with you. Number one, I want you to learn that if you that you need to focus on your spouse. Uh, number two, I want you to, to look at what you need to do in order to give your spouse the, um, the full attention. And number three, I want you to do everything possible within yourself to prevent what may happen in the future by taking care of what can the, the issues that can be resolved right now. Thank you again for watching and have a great day. God bless you. July uh, 5th, 1999, we just celebrated 4th of July uh, festivities and uh, being a member of the SWAT team, I was called out to a, a subdivision uh, where there was a man that, that had had a shotgun uh, and held it uh, at his wife's head and threatened to kill her. By the time Deputy Johnny Rose of Granbury, Texas arrived on the scene, the man had fled into the woods. Myself and this other officer uh, noticed there was a, a a, sil a shadow coming out of the, the woods and, and uh, looked like he was carrying a, what we thought was a shotgun. And as he's approaching us, he raises the shotgun up to his shoulder. With us fearing for our lives, we, we uh, shot, shot him and, and killed him. What he saw next would haunt him for years. We approached him to, to get the weapon away from him and then uh, I, I saw that it was a large stick he wanted to die, he wanted to commit suicide, and, and I was very angry that he used me and this other officer to do that. You know, it was a pretty rough day, I'd never been through that. Uh, 
didn't really know how to deal with all the feelings I was going through. Uh, you become angry, you're uh, scared. Although an investigation deemed the shooting justifiable, the guilt of killing an unarmed man weighed heavily on Johnny. I had uh, nightmares and flashbacks, and you have just strange thoughts when you go through a critical incident like that. Johnny was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. He went to mandatory counseling, but he was convinced he needed no one's help. It could be that just being stubborn that I could handle it on my own. You know, I didn't realize how hurt I was, I was in my mind, in my heart. I uh, still had problems burying myself in depression and, and bitterness and anger. It affected every area of his life. He became distant and irritable and often lashed out at those around him. It showed in, in, in my marriage and in, in how, in my work, how I was treating fellow employees. I just was so angry. Eventually, he and his wife divorced. I hurt my children, just upset me so much. You feel like a failure because you made a promise to that person and you made a promise to God you know, to, to, to be married. And, and so you, you feel like uh, quite a loser. Johnny sunk into a deep depression that would last for five years. It was a, a, a pit I couldn't get out of. I just felt like that nothing really mattered. Then after a string of failed relationships, he realized he needed help. I'd just broken up with a girlfriend. That was just the, the straw that broke the camel's back. And I'm like, yeah, this is it. I, I cannot do this myself. I think I'm a big, big bad cop. I can't handle this. Johnny had been raised in a Christian home, but never felt he needed Jesus in his life until now. I needed to turn to Jesus. Jesus, you get, you gotta, you gotta take this and you gotta handle this for me, and and you know I'll give it all that I've got for you, and uh, you know uh, I, I need you, and and uh, you know please come into my heart. After he prayed, Johnny dusted off the family Bible and began reading. There was a weight lifted. I, I felt different. You know I felt like that anger and bitterness was gone. My my life became much better. Uh, you, you uh, see things different uh, uh, as, a, as a believer, and, and, and I wasn't sure what was going to happen, uh, but I knew that it would be okay. He has since remarried and has a good relationship with his daughters. He also continues to work in law enforcement in Texas. No matter what he might face, though, Johnny says now he knows where to turn. The most important thing in life is to have a relationship with Jesus because he's truly the, the secret to life. He's... Uh, the one thing that will never change. Today, Johnny encourages members of the military and law enforcement who may be suffering with PTSD. If you're not a believer, you need to be a believer if you're gonna be in this, this profession. Nothing is impossible for God, nothing's too hard for God. He created me and you and he's worried about us and he loves us, you know, that's, that's a pretty amazing thought. Turn to Jesus and he can, he can give you peace of mind. That's what he's given me, is peace of mind. Well, that would be a tough situation for any one of us to live through. And Johnny found out that he just needed the peace of God. It is the only thing that calms our troubled souls. It's the only thing that takes away shame and guilt and uh, the failure that we feel that we've walked through. It's the only thing that calms our hearts. I often love the story um, when I think about um, in Matthew 8 where there was a huge storm and Jesus was asleep in the bottom of the boat and the disciples were freaking out and they had a lot of turmoil because they were up here you know where life was happening and and all of the waves they were crashing over the boat and finally they knew like where's Jesus we got to go and tell him and they went to the bottom of the boat and there Jesus was fast asleep and they woke him up and of course he came up and he said you know uh, peace be still and uh, immediately the storm was calmed and he looked at them and he said you of little faith why are you so afraid? Have you ever been through a couple of storms and it looked tumultuous? You, look, you felt broken. You didn't know how you were going to get through it. And you went kind of crazy and you, you kind of called on the name of the Lord an awful lot. And at the end of it, God calmed everything. He just calmed it. I wonder what that, that minute was like when Jesus came up and he just put his arms out and he said, peace be still. And, you know, uh, Peter and Mark and all of them had to just kind of go, what just happened here? Like everything's 
completely calm and peaceful. What were we freaking out about? God has an ability to bring peace into the middle of your storm. And you might be facing something, but you know with one word, he can turn it upside down. If you need some hope today, give us a call, one 855 700 It's a new day for you, and God has a new plan for that storm that seems to be raging. We'll be right back. Too often, we carry baggage from our past. You know what it's like. It affects everything and everyone in our lives. It's always there, weighing us down and keeping us from achieving true happiness. But do you know God never meant for us to be trapped in the past? You can be free of your baggage. Learn how God's forgiveness leads to changed lives and new beginnings. Call the 700 Club. Welcome back. Ask Anything is our latest DVD premium and gift to you. All you have to do is take one simple step. Give us a call and become a 700 Club Canada partner. Now, Ask Anything presents biblical insight on marriage, overcoming addiction, depression, and relationships. If you got questions and don't know where or how to find some of those answers, get Ask Anything. You'll find the wisdom and counsel that you need to meet the challenges you face, enabling you to live a life of victory. If you call, we'll send it to you immediately. 1-855-759-0700. And thank you for liking us on social platforms, Instagram, and also with Facebook, and sending in your praise reports. But what you put on your prayer list? We have a viewer, and uh, it's anonymous, from North Battleford, Saskatchewan, asking for a spirit of forgiveness. Mm. And Deborah in Edmonton praying for a new beginning. Mm -hmm. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you are the God of new beginnings. I pray, Father, for a radical, upside-down, jaw-dropping miracle in Deborah's life. I pray, Lord, that you would show yourself strong. I pray that the glory of God would be shown in her situation and that she would see your redemption, your vindication, yes, and your Lord. justice in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And, Lord, for that anonymous viewer and all of those that are watching, I pray during this time, before we go into the new year, that there would be, oh God, a forgiveness released. Mm -hmm. Lord, you said that we can't forgive because of the hardness of our hearts. But I ask in this moment now for your miracle of mercy and grace, because you said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, that they would forgive even as they are forgiven. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. We mm -hmm. want to leave you with a power verse. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you, Matthew 7, 7. Mm. Until next time. God bless. God bless. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca or write to us at Christian Broadcasting Associates, Incorporated. The 700 Club Canada, P.O. Box 700, Scarborough, Ontario, M1S4T4. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram.